Hello, everybody, and welcome back to game week four of the 23-24 PTC Therapeutics Premiership, where you join myself, Ryan Sipple, at the Lee Westwood Sports Centre for this fixture between Leeds Chariots and Teesside, fifth versus third. Six points separate them in the standings. I have no doubt this promises to be an absolute brilliant matchup. Let's bring up the table just so you can see how they've fared across the three weekends played and completed. Already both have secured wins in game week four. Leeds Chariot securing a 3-1 win over Nomad Knights earlier today. Teesside PFC matching that result 3-1 against Seven Oaks. You can see of Leeds' 13 games, they've won seven, drawn four, lost just two, and sit on 25 points. A little bit of ground to make up on the pack above them. Six points separates them and Teesside and Newcastle United Foundation of Teesside's 13 games they've won 10 drawn one lost just two an absolutely brilliant record scheduled for a one o'clock kickoff will be underway shortly let's go through the teams very quickly starting with Leeds Chariots coached by Paul Gorman and Russ Rigby they have Jack Britton, Jack Maxwell, Lewis Harris, Dan Rigby and Harrison Taylor. Ben Robinson, their number 24, unavailable for selection. Teesside, coached by both Owen Swift and Paul Pearson, have Ed Common, Dylan Pearson, Owen Swift, Mitch Tinkler, Tyler Eve and Alistair Hay. Leeds of a five game weekend as mentioned they started with a 3-1 win over Nomad Knights before this match up they have another game yet to play scheduled for half past four today against Seven Oaks tomorrow they face Nottingham and Aspire Teesside will complete their fixtures with this one against Leeds for today tomorrow West Bromwich Albion Throstles and Nomad Knights. So no doubt Teesside will be hoping for maximum points as they still have the optimistic hope of chasing both Aspire and West Brom above them. So our central referee Pete Taylor, who's complimented by Jeff Lewis and Ian Harley, gets ready. to begin proceedings looks like Leeds Chariot and Dan Rigby will have the kickoff and then I will bring you the action live once again thank you to all that are joining both in this games and others that have been played across game week four we have plenty of football left to be played So, pretty much bang on one o'clock, certainly from the clock here at the Lee Westwood Sports Centre. Pete Taylor blows his whistle to begin proceedings. Some early pass in Palais from Leeds. Go through the exact squads of these two teams. Lewis Harris is the designated goalkeeper of Leeds Chariot, adorning the green goalkeeper jersey. His teammate in white with shades of blue and yellow. Dan Rigby, Jack Britton and Jack Maxwell. Teesside comprised of Alistair Hay in the yellow goalkeeper jersey. In front of him, Tyler Reeve with wingers of Mitch Tinkler and Ed Common, of course, adorning blue. Mitch Tinkler trying to force the ball past Jack Britton. Just locked up. 
plenty of people viewing at courtside and from the mezzanine. It could have such huge significance for how each season finishes as Ed Common attempts an effort. Pete Taylor's whistle is in his mouth. But play does continue. Just ricochets to the back of Tyler Reeves' chair. Jack Maxwell set away on this wing. If Lewis Harris can reverse it down to his winger, Ed Common just lets that go. So Dan Rigby controls. As I mentioned in Leeds' earlier game against Nomad Knights, both Dan Rigby and Lewis Harris, two players that recently represented an England development team that was successful in securing the home nations against opposition from Scotland and Spain. I suppose you can't really call it a home nations, more a developmental tournament as Jack Maxwell attempts an effort. Rigby, and he's destined for that left-hand side of the post. Alistair Hay has to clear good pressure from Leeds on the topic of that international development tournament Tyler Reeve of Teesside also present Dan Rigby across the court Mitch Tinkler's gonna sweep that up and try and turn the tide as suspected very closely contested in the opening three minutes two on one in favour of Leeds Chariots three points for Teesside would see them sit three behind West Bromwich Albion so could still very much be considered title contenders Leeds sits six points behind Teesside. They could half that gap with a win here. They're putting pressure on via Jack Maxwell. Two or three consecutive shots all fired into the side of Tyler Reeves' chair. Anyone that was tuning in to the fixtures just prior to these one o'clock kickoffs. I think West Brom and Aspire showed the viewing audience here in Nottingham why they're considered such strong title contenders. 6-0 victory for West Brom Albion over Manchester United. A 6-1 victory for Aspire over Nottingham. Not just the score lines, the goals that were scored were absolutely sensational. Whilst I wasn't commentating some of the passing play from West Brom, They've come out of the traps with a real real intent, real vigour as they look to dethrone Aspire. I'll just Maxwell now. He's gonna put pressure on Alistair Hay, tries to flick it towards the goal. He's gonna try and squeeze it between the two defensive players of T side. They just adjust in time but the danger still present Jack Britton and Dan Rigby have to be careful should the ball ricochet out the box still very congested in that final third into the box Tyler Reeve sweeps up Tyler Reeve is going to try and break now these two know each other's game so well. Contact, excessive force. You can see the stand in Aspire lead the way on 40. West Brom. Close behind Newcastle United Foundation currently playing on court B. He boasts a 1 0 scoreline, so that's a live table. They can go joint on points with West Bromwich Albion, which is 
remarkable really should anyone manage to secure a win or points against Aspire we could very much go into the final weekend with a two three potentially a four horse race Tinkler into the path of Ed Common who slots home brilliant well worked opportunity arguably against the run of play had to absorb a lot of pressure but absolute brilliant work there there's Ed Common put to Teesside in the lead a great assist from Mitch Tinkler Leeds looking for an immediate reply just too much pace for Jack Britton now that that goal has been scored let's just have a look at the significance of the standings to Teesside go back above Newcastle United Foundation go joint on points with West Bromwich Albion so close I think it's fair to say that Leeds and Teesside are in phases of transition Teesside recently acquired Ed Common from Northern Thunder such a well, brilliant world class player but will need time to adjust and adapt to a different style of play new teammates Leeds the exact same as a beautiful pass from Dan Rigby but Lewis Harris and Jack Maxwell's recent acquisitions it's a good adjustment from Lewis Harris there's no reason at all why next season these two can't challenge for the title alongside Aspire West Brom potentially even Newcastle as well so whilst I, d I don't want to turn the clock forward I'm already excited for the prospect of next season. These chariots nil, Teesside one. As Teesside begin to assert their dominance, attacking pressure. Eight and a half minutes gone. Tyler Reeve on 16 goals. Ed Common now on 14. Mitch Tinkler on 9. So you can see that the goals that are shared amongst the attacking players of Teesside. So clinical. Teesside can't boast as an impressive of a goal record, but it just shows all players with the equal responsibility in front of goal Dan Rigby, Jack Maxwell both on seven Harrison Taylor on five as confirmed earlier there's confirmation of the current score on court B Newcastle getting underway early Goal kick for Leeds Chariots, taken by Lewis Harris. Dan Rigby closely marked by Ed Common. Out of play. Tinkler into Common no one there to receive his pass on the left hand side Rigby 
into Britain, over to Maxwell. Starting to get fairly congested in the center of the court. Ed Common with an attempt at goal. These two last met in March. 1-1, one, one, it finished then. Breathe into the box. Good work from Jack Maxwell. Has options in support. Harris advancing up the court to top Dan Rigby has to fill that void as the most defensive of the four chariots players quickly taken by Reeve into common Maxwell blocks the initial effort Common. It's an attempt at goal. That loose ball from Lewis Harris. Tyler, he tried to capitalise, and Rigby was there to sweep up. Just seemed to be cancelling one another out at the moment. He manages to find Jack Britton for that flick. And Maxwell can't quite pick out a teammate. Two on one in favour of Teesside. As mentioned at the start, one final game of the day to play for Leeds Chariots. They play Seven Oaks at half past four. This is the final game of the day for Teesside tomorrow. They play Throstles and Nomad Knights as we get our first substitute of the game. Number 44, Harrison Taylor for Leeds Chariots comes on. Jack Britton, the player, going off. Confirmation on your screens now. Be interesting to see if they can put Harrison Taylor away on that left-hand wing in so much space. We know how brilliant Dan Rigby's distribution is. The same can very much be applied to Lewis Harris. So keep an eye out for the potential counters and quick breaks Jack Britton was very isolated whilst on the court so Harrison Taylor will probably have to be comfortable being isolated and out the game for large percentages but be alert should the ball break to him and that is the distribution I was talking about fantastic from Rigby to find Maxwell couldn't quite get the angle to trouble Alistair Hay too much Harrison Taylor trying to follow up the attack exactly what I was referencing Leeds absorbing the pressure but give Dan Rigby an opportunity to he will find one of his attacking wide players well kept in Mitch Tinkler with the kick in Controlled by Ed Common. Back to Tyler Reeve. Very congested. Rigby trying to fire it up to Harrison Taylor. Just over four minutes left to be played in this first half. Leeds nil, T 
Teesside one. That's beautiful play from Teesside. You can really just start to see the chemistry being established between Tyler Reeve and Ed Common. Ed Common playing an almost unfamiliar role from one that he has adopted in the past. Obviously, when he was playing for Northern Thunder, he was very much the key central player, pulled the strings in attack, was solid in defence. So whilst it's an unfamiliar role from that, he played at Thunder, this, is, this very much replicates the style of play and the football he has played with England. Substitute for Leeds Chariots, Jack Maxwell, the player coming off. Jack Britton re-enters the action, and that's a ricochet, and that's going to go all the way over the line. That is always the danger when you commit players forward. Whilst I absolutely commend the bravery and the ambition of Leeds Chariots to kind of play that four out way it comes with potential vulnerabilities and Ed Common will be the goal scorer to score his second of the game So now on for his hat-trick. <laughs> Tyler Reeve to take. Mitch Tinkler in the centre, over to Ed Common, trying to find his hat-trick. Good defensive organisation between Harris and Rigby. Approaching the final minute. Leeds started brightly, but didn't really trouble Alistair Hay in the Teesside defence. Seaside have just capitalised on momentary lapses in concentration and the high line adopted by Paul Gorman's side. Final warning for Lewis Harris there. Reeve over to Rigby nicely distributed by Rigby Britain trying to follow up the attack Ed Common happy to let that roll out of play final 10 seconds leads nil T side 2 I'll bring up the live table at the half time break Signals half time. Let's bring up the table. And whilst I do that, it's worth noting that T side are still yet to play West Brom and Aspire, or they definitely have to play them again, both in game week five. So should they be able to secure maximum points across game week four ahead of their matchups? 
they will very much be hoping that Aspire and West Brom falter maybe in game week 4 or even game week 5 we know Aspire and West Brom have to play one another again Teesside have to be considered as title contenders same can be applied for Newcastle and whilst they are six p points behind Aspire in the lead all of them have to meet one another again so it really is compelling viewing and I hope it goes down to the wire likewise from the championship so competitive it's almost two divisions within the premiership first down to seventh in throstles and then eighth down to twelfth and whilst the relegation zone comprises the bottom two positions there's absolutely no reason why one of the, either nomad knights or hull can't secure enough points in the remaining games of game week four and of course game week five to find their way out of the scrap at the bottom if I haven't mentioned already not necessarily relevant to this game but for the teams down the bottom positions 11th and 12th are automatically relegated to the championship at the conclusion of game week five whoever finishes the season in 10th so currently Manchester United on goal difference will play whoever finishes third in the championship in a one-off playoff fixture but anyway thank you to all that are tuning in for this one I'll be back shortly for the second half So we are back for the second half in this fixture between Leeds Chariots and Teesside. Currently separated by two goals for Teesside. Both scored by their number four, Ed Common. Teams unchanged from that that finished the first half. And we are back underway. Tyler Reeve exchanging a quick pass 
one two with Ed Common weaves his way into the Leeds box early pressure picking up where they left off ricochets kindly to Mitch Tinkler he's going to just try and bypass Jack Britton who has to drop off to ensure a two on one isn't awarded against his team Looks like they're going to trial a particular set piece, American style. It's Mitch Tinkler just angles his chair at the last second to try and capitalise on that gap left at the left hand post. Lewis Harris adjusts accordingly. We've spoken about set pieces here at the National League, more so the Premiership than the Championship, but many have been inspired with what they saw from the USA at the 2023 Fit for Power Chair Football World Cup. Looks like they're going to go for a more traditional setup here as Ed Common fires it into Mitch Tinkler off the back wheel of Dan Rigby. Good early work from Teesside. Cleared by Jack Britton. Less than two minutes into this second half and Teesside already proving a real threat. Leeds comprised of Lewis Harris, Dan Rigby, Jack Britton and Harrison Taylor. effort from Tyler Reeve, beautiful pass from Tinklo, just faints to engage in a battle with Britain, but guides it over to Common on the left, Teesside that of Alistair Hay, Tyler Reeve, Ed Common and Mitch Tinkler another corner struck by Common, once again picks out Tinkler Exchanging some really nice passes on the edge of the Leeds box. The final effort just presents Britain with an opportunity to break. The brilliant defence from Tinkler to get back and stuff up the advancement. Live on court B, Villa Rockets. Currently trailed Newcastle United by a goal to nil. Greg Baxter, the commentator on that one. It can also be found live on the WFA's YouTube as Dan Rigby almost looked like he was shaping up to distribute out over to Harrison Taylor in the bottom corner, but attempted the effort at goal. It's opening up into end staff as Tyler Reeve now balls into the Leeds half looks like Newcastle have doubled their advantage against Villa Rockets I'll bring confirmation of that one shortly now another chance to score from Teesside just out of play on that occasion There's confirmation of that Newcastle goal. I'll bring up the standings in a few moments time. Obviously Teesside will be closely watching their northeast rivals who are matched on points with them as good work from Teesside. Harris. So let's bring up the table for the top six teams. You can see still West Brom, Teesside and Newcastle all locked on 34 points apiece. Good work as Ed Common attempts an effort 
I'm really impressed by Mitch Tinkler's distribution in this game. Very unselfish from the T side number 10. they are locked on points with both Newcastle and West Brom Teesside boast a more favourable goal difference than their North East rivals plus 14 more than that of Newcastle West Brom certainly following that earlier 6-0 win over Manchester United on plus 46 so they've limited the gap to Aspire on plus 49 at the top West Brom was a game in hand over their title rivals, so they can half that gap. As mentioned, they still are yet to meet in game week five. Free kick for Teesside, taken by Tyler Reeve. Over to Mitch Tinkler, couldn't quite get the time in. I think that's more credit to Dan Rigby, who limited the space. battle between Harris and Tinkler Britton and Reeve have to be careful should the ball ricochet in their direction really trying to force their way up the court Tyler Reeve doing a brilliant job at limiting leads Harris and Taylor into the box, Rigby with a follow-up effort cleared by Alistair Hay. Hasn't had much to do in the 27 and a half minutes so far, but was alert to that opportunity. So Dan Rigby to take the resulting corner kick, probably just out of view of our cameras. Harrison Taylor, the only real option present as Rigby just ricochets it into the post didn't make contact with Tyler Reeve and as stated by the laws can't have two successive touches from a set piece from the same player has to go via the chair of another player on the court so good officiating from Jeff Lewis to acknowledge that Rigby Fired down the court, looking for Jack Britton, starting to open up. They need to be careful, Leeds. This is the manner in which Teesside capitalised, certainly for their second in the first half. Exploiting the high line and the four-out system, often adopted by Leeds Chariots. Harris now with possession on the wing ricochets back to Dan Rigby Harrison Taylor keeps it in but too much pace just rolls out of play you can see that brace from Ed Common sees him it just a goal behind Tyler Reeve in the Teesside top goal scorer charts. Reeve into common over to Tinkler. Not sure how he found. He's number 10 teammate, but did so. Very congested though, so Pete Taylor calls a two on one. 
10 minutes to go. Leeds Charrett still trail by two goals to nil. Both scored by Ed Common in the first half. Teesside yet to utilise either of their substitutes, Owen Swift and Dylan Pearson. Both waiting to come on. Another goal from Teesside would surely give them enough of a buffer to experiment. Remains to be seen as it just rolls out for a Leeds kick in. Taken by Harrison Taylor. Dan Rigby down the line. Lewis Harris in the gap. But that's a risky move, so I think he'll try his luck to find Jack Britton at the back post, which he does. No trouble for Alistair Hay. Across the court. Lewis Harris guides it to Britton. Pick off from Rigby. Across the box. Follow up effort from Lewis Harris. Arguably their best chance of the game. Had Lewis Harris put a little bit more power on that pick off. It would have troubled Alistair Hay more than it did. But more the passage of play that led up to that opportunity. The best they've had. Tinkler to Common. Just ricochets to the right. Then Rigby keeps it in. Common to Tinkler. Good work from Rigby. Two on one awarded two Leeds Chariots. We're going to get a substitute. It's going to be Leeds Chariots. Jack Maxwell, the player, re entering the action in place of Harrison Taylor. Rigby. Quickly closed down by Tinkler. Out for a goal kick. Let's see how the game is progressing on court B. Still a two goal buffer for Newcastle United Foundation. Leeds have just really struggled to figure out how to break past Tyler Reeve. Frustrated them throughout the 33 and a half minutes. They've got an opportunity here. Maxwell trying to distribute to Britain. Starting to open up end to end that chance from Leeds. Quickly followed by this for Teesside. Two on one in favour of Leeds Chariots. Taken by Harris into Rigby. Just lets that go. Rigby finds Maxwell despite being closed down by Ed Common. Common and Maxwell will know each other's game very well. Having played with each other at Northern Thunder, the ball went over the line. It ricocheted over Tyler Reeves' chair, but I would very much give that.
And with five minutes left to be played, Leeds have half the deficit, despite the appeals of Owen Swift and Dylan Pearson to my left. It's going to be an Alastair Hay own goal, I believe, certainly from what I've watched back. So what looks like an almost a certain win and three points for Teesside could very much change. I'd love to see Leeds really be brave in this final four minutes. It was definitely a goal. It, it, it ricocheted, the ricochet between the two chairs of Reeve and Hay. Common into the box. Now a potential break as Britain set away. He's only met by Alistair Hay. Tyler Reeve desperately trying to come back to cover in defence. Eventually takes possession. That's how to play for a Lee's Chariots ball. Well, it certainly left the court. I'm right on this touchline. And whilst I know the whole ball and its curvature has to go over the red line, I believe it did. Head in hands from Russ Rigby, who wanted the kick in, but fortunately for him and his team, Chariots do have a corner kick to try and find that equaliser. Three minutes left to be played. Rigby to take. Back to Harris. Closed by Tinkler. Into the box, off the back of Alistair Hayes' chair. Desperately trying to figure out the puzzle that is Reeve and Hay. Just presents a nice opportunity to Ed Common, who brilliantly keeps it in. Just that moment of magic relieves all pressure on his defence and that's the game management that's why he's one of the best players in the world with two minutes left on the clock he's got his team up the court and won them a kick in no doubt they'll be searching for that two goal buffer, buffer once again two minutes to be played Leeds Chariots one Teesside two Very tactical game, though, as Leeds are going to try and break. Rigby, fantastic pass. Maxwell trying to switch the play, and it just nicks off the front of the Chariots' number eight chair. Will Chariots get an opportunity to break? Time is not on their side. Common down to Tinkler. Intercepted by Rigby. Maxwell set away. Connects well with it. Would have wanted more angle to try and guide it over to Britain, who now just switches wings to allow Maxwell the room to roam on the left, the right-hand wing of Leeds Chariots. And these two familiar foes once again engaged in a 50-50 battle. We're now officially into the final minute. Out of play by Tyler Reeve. I will give player of the match to Mitch Tinkler, though. Despite them two goals from Ed Common, I think... Tinkler has had an excellent game distribution as well but there's still an opportunity for Leeds to rescue a point I wonder if we'll be given any additional time over the 20 as we approach the final 10 seconds Harris full time on court B Newcastle has secured three points side, whilst in the driving seat 
Pete Taylor looks at his watch. Well locked up by Mitch Tinkler. Talk about that game management. He did so brilliantly there. And that is full time. What a brilliant game of football. These chariots won. Teesside two. Ed Common with two finishes. Either side of the half. And Alistair Hay own goal in the 35th or so minute. Arguably against the run of play and with only being a one goal deficit at the time. Leeds started to put some pressure on but a professional performance from Teesside who secure the three points. Let's bring up the league table. Teesside and Newcastle both securing a win. Teesside with a game in hand over Newcastle United. So they can create a slight buffer over themselves and fourth. Commiserations to Lee's Chariots who still have another game to play against Seven Oaks today. That's it for Teesside. Maximum points from Saturday's action. Tomorrow they play Throstles and Nomad Knight. So I very much presume the talk between them players will be maximum points. Anything other than that would be seen as a disappointment. But thank you to all that have joined me for this match. Next up, on court A, we have Nottinghamshire versus Seven Oaks, a game that could be really significant in that fight for Premiership survival. Join me for that one shortly. <laughs> 